like you're not really really fighting the, the wheel though like, nah, it's, it's not it's not really really bad <laughs> so you've done a pretty good job but this, this is a state highway too yeah they want to get you to drive on state highways all the time so i'm sitting in um well it, it started as a hilux surf body it's sitting on a two-wheel drive hilux chassis kyle's owned lots of cool cars in his time and this time he's actually built one from scratch Try to. this is your first one from scratch eh? Yeah. you've always sort of traded well, and flipped and and yeah you crawl of the eight k70 crawl of the eight seven v8 hiluxes seven v8 hiluxes yeah I, I remember the it was the white one that was had the clutch issues so the celsius that i now own that which was Mad Sounds one, which is my parts wreck test vehicle. Oh, yeah, own He's owned that. Yeah. Five Celsius. Five Celsius. Yeah. He's, he's had a couple. Forty Toyotas. You, you can see why Kyle and I get on pretty well and are associated with each other because he's had lots of V8s in his stock. Fifteen years of bringing Calvin for help. <laughs> Fifteen years. So it's been a long time. Yeah. yeah. That'd be about right. Yeah. So this one. Um, we did the wiring loom on it, so it's got the Haltec loom that Jason made on the bench. It's got the run, it's got the Haltec dash, that looks really smart. I'm sitting in some Recaro seats, which are quite nice, which I've actually got to set on um, both of my surfs. Yeah. Just happy to have it. Well, they're just, they're just comfy. And, and a bit higher up. And, um, and they fit nicely and there's no issues because they're a standard seat. It all fits in nice. So how did you come across this body? Because was this body sitting on this chassis when you bought it? Yeah, this is the second one I bought. The first one was a, um, another one up from the far north that had been on there since 2012, but it was rusty. And we are going to go down this path putting a V8 in it, but it was too far gone to a certain point, like it needed everything. Yep. This one popped up and Glenn and Matrick had done the conversion themselves and they cut the chassis 250 mils in the middle to shorten it and then change the rear body mounts from what I understand. Um, there's a few different ways of doing it and it seems to be the way that everyone sort of does it. And they just bought it side unseen with the, and I was going to keep it the 3 1KZ in it and then that lasted about 5 minutes and then we've gone down this track over the past 12 months. Yeah, and he considered um, one used VVTIs and one of those. He, he bought one, yeah, because you've sold that only, haven't you? Yeah, bought a whole four wheel drive, um, converted one, de wrenched, and was just going to swap everything over factory. And then it was just like, we're going to, we're never going to be happy with that. Um, it was going to be auto, standard computer, and just, yeah, but we're going to, we need to do that <laughs> these days. And so a 3UZ was decided on um, with the Haltec on it. Is that noise we need to find too? Yeah, so you just started up to the track. It actually sounds like the PCV or the other purge solenoid. It goes in when you put the clutch. That's an interesting one, isn't it? Go for a drive to just to see about the tracking with the wheels. Uh, Kyle's got a big set of 20s on it uh, and a 275, which is a massively wide uh, tire for a Hilux. Um, surprisingly, even though it's got the 20s on it, it's not ideal, but it's not as bad as some I've driven. So he's done a pretty good job of setting all the suspension up. Suspension tech, he done all the reset leaves, drop spindles in the front, door steams all around. Makes a huge difference that stuff, eh? Yeah. And 
we've got R151 gearbox. Yep. Yeah, so which is late motor Hilux for us, like it's like a 2004, 2005 to 2015. We get the gearboxes out of. They actually still run the later ones as well. Late box. So the interior wise, you just put the Recaros in it. Yeah. The so rest is as it was. Marco Motorsport dash cluster for the yeah. IC7 dash, which was easy. You didn't get the um, door cards. Yeah. Those Recaro door cards as well. Are they? Yeah. Oh, wait. Oh, yes, they are. Sorry. My mistake. Couldn't see with the sunglasses. <laughs> It was a frost this morning, but it's it's also a love, lovely sunny day now. But it's, yeah, it still drives pretty good, like for what it, like it's a Frankenstein. So it's and I've got to remember it's a '92 Hilux chassis. Yeah. But I'm just trying to achieve a lot more than what we're achieving so far. Yeah. I just limited because of that rear fuel, the fuel filler area, and the, just not having a ute that you can just cut out the ass end of it pretty much. You. Because you would normally bag them and dump them. Just even cut it out. Just a lot of it. Yeah. Just cut it out to get that travel. Yeah. So this one hasn't even, like, normally you'd also well, put a C notch on them. Yeah. But you haven't done that because it's a station wagon. Yeah, I'm trying to avoid it. Because I don't want to cut into those rear wheel tubs. Yeah. And trying to avoid moving the fuel filler because we built an expensive fuel system on it to set up nicely and low off the ground. One, one day I'll do a video on the fuel systems on yeah, these yeah. to avoid the mistake that happened. Yeah, yeah. But hey, we're actually we're actually discussing this morning, right? Another mate of mine who turned up just before you. He pretty much texted me and said, "Hey, the fuel's ready," and my mate turned up. But that you've made a lot of fuck ups on the vehicles you've built over the years. Yeah. Okay. But you've also learned a lot. Yeah. So sort of. I, I, I've made a lot of fuck ups in my lifetime. Yeah. And that's why I I do what I do now. And sometimes, even these days, you know, we still have mistakes. Yeah. And we admit it. We just get on with it, sort it out. Yeah. yeah it's been pretty good. The fuel, the fuel decision was made because the certifier wasn't that direct in if we can put the filler through the tail light. So the original search we filled above the guard, but now we're, because it's on the lower chassis, we only have enough that much filler space oh, yeah. for in between the wheel. So it's squashed it again anyway, but. Just trying to put it somewhere nicely without creating a monster was hard. Um, yep. Originally, it was going to go under the, where the spare wheel tire was, and I think it's going to go there anyway. And we're going to have to put it through the floor, and maybe the fillers are either going to go through the back guard or through a window and do it through a lesson glass. Oh, window. yeah. That's the next step, just to get it away from that wheel arch because it's the certifiers. He's not going to want it sitting there, I don't think, anyway, because it's too low. We can go, we can go see the certifier. I've got a good certifier. You can take it, yeah. I've got to go to that next step anyway. I waste more money and go down the wrong track again. Uh, but I, we had to get here to find that as well. Yeah. So. I've, I've got to go. Um, I've got to go to see the certifier because he wants me to wire his truck. Yeah. That's a bit of an accolade for me. I'm pretty proud about that. And then I've got to talk to him about a couple of vehicles. It's got to be. Can I do this? Can I do this? Can I do this? Can I do this? And I'll just have a list of all the things and do it in one go. Yeah, this one's a bit of a pain because it's. suspension on the chassis the suspensions yes. again and if they don't match what was certified in 2010 or 15 when it was done then I'll have to fix those as well which yeah yeah but originally we wanted to do the, the coilovers in the back just to try and manage the travel and the, the ride height perfectly because using leaves and blocks isn't that easy yes because you it's just more in and out so but we need to move the gas tank now to put the four length or five length bars in yeah so that tank's gonna stay, we're just gonna move it somewhere else. It's all that little bit of a scrape. Yeah. When we first went on the track at Hand and Downs, it was scraped real bad, but it's obviously worn out a bit now, but it's still there. Mate, for an overall build of what you've done so far, every case. It's it's amazing, quite amazing. Yeah. It's, it really is amazing. Normally this loud, he does have a rear muffler section, but track days you're allowed to make them loud, so it's okay. And, I'll and, have the same and, and how much time have you done on the track? Most of it. Um, yeah, we've done probably 100 k's around the track in two days. 
Yeah. And the rest has been going on and off the trailer the whole time, so a couple of trips to town. And so I ran the track the whole weekend without any, any yep. issues. Just, Good. Just teething issues. Handy to have a parking spot, eh? There it is, that. It's on like the a, rundown. It's like a flutter, eh? It wasn't there. It, it's, it's a bit like an exhaust leak, actually. Well, yeah. Which is weird that when you but when you drop the, the foot on the, foot on the clutch, that it goes away, but it sounds exhaust leak. We've got another vehicle in there that still actually does start and drive. Um, that's pretty fucking cool, actually. You'll, you'll like that, the other truck that's in. Um, and... <laughs> So Jason will be able to move that out and put it on the hoist and have a look. Oh, so you put some extra lights on around the outside of the dash as well? Yeah, so you can tick like all the um, functions you want, but they're not hooked up because IC7 does it all. So you got fuel gauge, high yep. beam, low beam, battery and indicators, but IC7 does it all anyway. That looks, they still look pretty cool, those lights around the outside. Oh, it just makes Fills the it up conversion easier compared to the old days of trying to get numerous gauges going and yeah, and it, and it does everything. I'm pretty good at it, at making gauges go. Yeah. But this stuff does make it's it just clean. way, way easier. Yeah. Way easier. Real clean. Yeah. Right. That was a good drive on the trail. You've done that a few times. <laughs> done it. See how straight it is when we get out. Well, you managed to get those back seats in the. That looks smart. Battery in the back. So that's going to need a box in it, eh? Yeah, it's got a box, but they failed it on um, at Hamptons because it's got plastic, it had the straps on it. Oh, you didn't put the screws? Certifi certification, but they don't pass it. So they gave us a steel bracket with a plastic yes. bracket that goes across that complies, apparently. So, right. yeah, that's You can probably do, do a bracket inside the box. I think it would go into a nice LE stainless box or something just to close it off. So it was actually already painted when you got it. Oh, you've got the uh, the standard Nissan brakes on it that we do. I've got to do a video on that and try and actually show what we do because um, last time Jason was way too fast for me. So the high ace discs go on those? Yeah, so it's a uh, KZH100. And there's three different ODs for them, eh? So there's different di outside diameters for them. So the only thing. Oh, you'll have to put that, breathe that back in for cert. That'll have to be popped into here for cert. And when they do the factory, they actually put a little tiny restrictor on it. So go get a um, a metal or a um, a bottle brush yeah. and put a bottle brush in the hose. Okay. okay. <laughs> so the only thing we haven't got is the window washers sort of dead. We haven't got to right. the There's no guards. So there's no. Yeah. No, they're not done yet. There's nowhere to put it. Okay, well, actually, we'd, we'd go here normally. Yeah, we just swap the sides. Try and put everything on that side to get the to so remove the fuse, fuse box cord from where it's set on top. Yeah. The how are you getting on with your power steer reservoir? It's still leaking. It still stuff. blows a little bit out. Yeah. So don't use those. <laughs> so we put the we put that there in there. Put a little like filter in there to try and stop it. Okay. Yeah. If you if, if that box was another two inches, fifty mils longer, it'd probably solve the problem. Yeah. Have you got an oil? Oh, you don't have a cooler, eh? The other one would be a past air cooler would be a really really good idea to help that pump last. Yeah. Um, I've got to buy another one. Extruded aluminium ones to fit under the front is a good idea. That flood is in the front here, eh? It's down here. This is easy to get to now. Yeah. Custom and, oil. Oh, it's good. Because this has got the custom sump on it too. We'll have a look when it's on the hoist and. Front suspension, that looks looks um so with the new here. new shocks in it, and then the the uh, drop spindles look smart. The calipers fitted right with the drop spindles. That's why we yeah we had to put the calipers on there because of the drop spindles. Okay, because the, the arms were on the, on the normal ones. Yeah, yeah. and that, so the Nissan ones fitted. Yeah, that was the fix. Yep. Which they should tell you when you buy the spindles. Theory. Ah, uh, well, the fix is actually you put the calipers upside down. Oh, that, yeah. So, there's a lot of talent in New Zealand. 
it, it, we, and we don't share it enough on those sort of like those little things which is good for some people but it just be, it'll make things so simple like oh when you use these have a set of gdst brakes or move your you know for the novices i guess people have done it hundreds of times so yeah but mate i'm trying yeah i'm trying to share that do. thing is there's this bracket in here that can come out and up the top yeah so i was sort of cutting that that can just get cut out so cut that out grind that off and then your fuel filler do a oval pipe crush it take the pipe out put it in a press crush it i don't care if i got a pipe that big and just be really slow just be slow but it's filling up once every month you know you know so if that that, that is fixable without moving that I don't want to move it because then I have to paint it. Yeah, we, you can do it without moving that. It's going to be a little bit of a job, yeah. but it's going to be the cheapest option. If you crush that tube down where it's scraping, I can see what's scraping on the inside edge. Yeah. Crush it down. There's a few rub marks, but I don't think it's, yeah. Crush it down, you'll get it. And then slightly smaller wheels, yeah. it'll fit. Yeah. And then that's preventing it from hitting it here. Oh no, it might have hit there as well, touched there as well. But yeah, cut that bracket. What, that's a, was it a wiring thing or something going up through there? What was what was under this factory? That's just where the fuel filler is. Well, right. Be okay. Yeah, there's a that, that bracket thing. Cut it out. Yeah. Unpick it. You unpick it nicely. If you take the spot welds out. Yeah. It might need a weld up when you unpick it. Look good. Now that'll fix it. And then the same on the, on this side. A little bit of a hammer. And then you go smaller wheels, it'll give you even more clearance. Tie it here. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right, you get this to the workshop. Let's go. Tie it on. Take it to see Jace. He's ready for you. So Jason just popped off the intake manifold. Do you have anything to say to people who um, complain about taking the intake manifold off? I've said it before, I'm not going to say it again because it's not very polite. <laughs> there you go. It was something to do with hardening up. Uh, now this one, there was a little mistake when it went to the dyno that they hadn't fitted any way of fuel pressure regulation. So, you've seen us, we use the 4-bar GM type style filter. This one's another way of doing it, which we used to do a lot of. <clears throat> so you bring your fuel line in, supply into a fuel pressure rig. You run it out to the fuel rail. You adjust the regulator to suit and you run a return back to the tank. You don't actually need a vacuum line running to it. Uh, this one is actually teed in. So this one is actually getting some vacuum. Um, so you can set it up with or without, it doesn't matter when you're running an aftermarket computer. This one's got a, a Haltec on it, so it's just tuned to suit. For certification, this is going to need to come into the intake. Is the PPE there? No, it needs to, this needs to be into the intake, it needs to be closed. Even though there's just a filter here. We don't make the rules, we just got to comply with them. I you had to add one. No, sorry, you've got to have a working system then. A closed system. Is that better? Yes. Closed? I'm, I didn't use the right words. No, I? no, I just didn't hear you. I thought you said you were adding one. No, it needs to. There's one there. Yeah, there's one there. So Jace is going to pop that starter out and see if it's a problem there or it's something else. It's, it's faulted a couple of times, whether it's a bad connection. We just double check the size of the wire, whether it's a relay. They hit the back of the starter and it starts. Yeah, so it does look to be a starter type issue, eh? The, the old pollen's going crazy at the moment, eh? Do you notice how much pollen's around? Yeah, that's from back there. From back in the boat yesterday. Yeah. Do you know where the computer actually's hidden? Oh, here it is. Mate, look how neat that is. As we said, uh, Jace did the pre-wire on this. And there's the ECU tucked in the glove box. There isn't a glove box, it's been cut out. ECU mounted in behind. That's really smart. Very neat.
We didn't we didn't push it on the hoist, Chase did drive it on the hoist. Engine's all back together. He even put the intake manifold on by himself without me here. We have uh there's your skyline calipers on the inside. And I did find uh, all the bits for my calipers because there's another Hilux turning up that Jace has got to put calipers onto. He's got to pull the heads off too, but we won't talk to him about that. He can work it out. So this one's got a rear sump. Custom dipstick in it. Uh, proper rear sump because being 3UZ, we wanted to rear, well, we, the engine wanted to be pushed all the way back. Now this vehicle is sitting on a set of our engine mounts, our universal engine mounts, but it's had the chassis mounts rebuilt as well. And I suspect that's because this had a 1KZ turbo in it. It's got a solid spacer in the steering. The big box. See it's got the uh, drain plug on the side pointing to the chassis, making it the, the big gearbox. Custom gearbox mount, and that's a lovely job actually, I really do like that mount. I'm not sure the cert man will like it, he might want to gusset along the side yet, even though that's solid as solid can be. Hey, we don't make the rules, we just got to follow them, and they do some funny things even though I think that's solid as solid can be. Drive shaft hoops, uh, we need those for certification, and make them legal here in New Zealand, and uh, this vehicle would already had a certification, so that's why... It's got mounts, uh, it's got hoops that are a little bit older. Oh, it's had a new drive shaft by the looks of it, a new hanger bearing. There's the fuel tank, look at that. Custom aluminium fuel tank. Got the right sticker on it even. Oh, there's the pump. Oh, filter tucked in the back there, filter there. That's very neat. That's very, very neat. Springs are being reset. He's actually putting new bumpers on it, eh? He was telling me, Jay said he put a forerunner tailgate on it that was different as well. Oh, that's why it's loud. So uh, back muffler's missing, so it's normally got the back muffler in here. Exhausts, oh, should have a look at that. We've got our headers in here. Um, there we go. So those are our uh, semi-finished headers. Uh, they, we do a set that's welded together, but we also do a set that's not welded. And so the, when they buy them, when people buy them, they cut a little bit off and make them closer. And that makes them fit two-wheel drive Hiluxes. Now, what we're going to look at is a couple of little notes on this vehicle, and it's to do with making cars legal here in New Zealand. Uh, it's not intended to criticise the person who's done this job and completed most of the work on this job, because they've done a fantastic job, absolutely fantastic job. But there's a couple of little bits and pieces um, that are going to need some attention. Jason's going to fix one today. There's some other little bits and pieces. And... We have the knowledge that we have is because of the mistakes that we have made or other mistakes that we've made. And we could do a documentary on just the mistakes we've made, but that's how we learn. And one of the issues on this particular vehicle uh, is the oil pressure sensor. So up here, here's the oil pressure sensor. Here it is there. Uh, that's better. Here we go. Here's the oil pressure sensor. Uh, this is the oil feed to the oil filter block and it's going to the outside of the oil filter, that's correct but this is going coming from the engine and this is going to the engine so if the oil filter had a blockage at the moment this pressure sensor would still read pressure so it needs to be removed and it needs to be inserted into that hole which may not be the most fun job it may mean that this block actually has to come off to make it fit and sometimes some sanding in here needs to be done do you mind? You made lots of noise. <laughs> you right, Chase? I'm fine. It's lucky it's Friday. I'm fine. Last day of the working week for Jace. It's not Friday, it's Thursday, but it's Friday, my Friday. It's, that's correct. Oh. 
So that needs to be resolved. Another thing that we need to do here is keep hot stuff away from flammable stuff. So exhausts have to be 100 millimeters away from things like fuel lines and brake lines. Uh, so there's a couple of spots on this one. And I know this because I've made this mistake myself. Here's some fuel lines here. And there's a uh, half a finger distance. It's a technical measure because I don't have a banana with me. Uh, so we, we've got to have 100 mils between exhaust and fuel lines. And this is the bit that actually caught me on one of these. This one's got a fuel line, uh, fuel line, brake line right here. Here's the exhaust, here's the brake line, runs right up. It's only a very tiny distance. And then in this area, I, I was caught out here, which is in the right front with to the exhausts and to ex, uh, exhaust manifolds. So they're gonna need some wrapping. I normally put some wrap around these and then build a heat shield as well. That is really smart. That is really smart. So overall, this is a really, really cool truck. And uh, things are done a bit differently because he wanted the 3UZ and he wanted that engine to sit really low. Normally we'd run a front sump, but by putting this rear sump in, of course he's got, look how much clearance around the steering. Woo! Actually really interesting how on the two wheel drives there's no steering dampener because of the smaller wheels. Because I was thinking, you know, this is a, a surf body, but of course it's a, a uh, Hilux, it's a two drive chassis. And the other thing I think I would recommend on this one would be a power steer oil cooler, which I better order some for that other job. And I'd probably just tuck it in underneath this bumper here. Apart from that, this is a, a really, really cool vehicle. Um, the tune came up really nice. Jace's wiring loom is superb. Very neatly done. And uh, it drives really well. And Kyle's going to have to make it drive even better still. All right, All right. hope that's been helpful. Hey, and we'll talk to you again soon. We'll catch you later.